Hey guys, how's it going? Hakobo here, excited to bring you another dope bass noise, and this is what it sounds like. So let's go ahead and set up the wavetables for that, which I'm just going to throw on Trilobite 3 and Basic Ward. Now you're going to notice uh, for Unison, I'm only going to be putting on the Oscillator A, and I'll explain why in a bit. But let's go ahead and just knock down the octave and two on that and one on that because I'm tired of reaching all the way to E2. We're going to be playing on E4 today. And I just throw the wavetable position over here and level down for both bases. Also taking the random down just so that we have a consistent sound. Now if I ever turn the random down, I immediately go into global and make the mode into exponential. So I have less of a clash between the phasing. Let's go ahead and set up our LFOs, which there's only two of. You're just going to go ahead and curve this up just like that, knock this down to one half, and leave it on trigger. Now, I'm also going to be making my classic uh, master tuning LFO right here. Put this on bar. And I'm going to leave this off because when I want to put down the bass notes, I want this to continue even if there's different bass notes going on, which is a cool option if you want to not have to worry about modulating each and every note with an LFO. You just turn off and it'll just continue to go on with the notes being apart. Now let's get some sound going. Let's go ahead and throw this on the level all the way across and get our FM from B going on 40% and knocking the LFO over 7. Let's get a sub directed out real quick and get that on 60 just so it's there and gets a little more uh, oomph out of our bass. Knock that down to negative 2 so it matches the root of our main oscillator. I am also going to turn on some noise and the noise is going to be pretty important but not at the moment. It's not going to make much sense what this noise is for until we start talking about post-processing. Now for the filter, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the band 24, which is very important for getting any form of vowel out. And we're going to go ahead and just put the resonance on 50. Now the cutoff filter is very pushy, meaning that if you move it just a little bit, it's going to completely change the characteristic of the sound. So if you want to get the timbre for this exact bass, I put it on 50 hertz and then knocked it uh, up 25 using our main LFO. And I just kind of keep everything else the same. Now, just throwing this on real quick, it's going to give us that vowel that we're looking for. But a lot of the high frequency has been sacrificed right here, which we're going to get back with some effects. Now, diving into our effects, you're going to notice I have uh, things mixed up a little bit. We're going to throw on distortion first, which... Uh, isn't going to make too much of a difference right now until we start getting those high frequencies back and then you can start turning it on and off and see the uh, the characteristic change. Or I could just show you, you know. I kind of want you to do it yourself. I want you to do it yourself. Next we're going to put the compressor on and just turn the multiband on and let's just get some gain out of it. Not a lot, not a little. Five's good. And this is going to bring out some of our sound a little bit more. Now normally I put the hyper dimension on top, but I noticed with some bases it just kind of brings out this weird high frequency. I don't know what goes on, but just super high pitch frequency comes out on certain bases. So I noticed throwing it under the compressor fixes that. And with the hyper dimension you can do the uh, detune to make a whole array of different you know movements inside your timbre that really change up the uh, what the bass is doing but for this one I just leave everything on default and mix it to 50 right here which I think just sounds best for this bass. It's starting to sound like what we want we just need a little bit more oomph. Now this is where I do uh, Alchemy's favorite thing to do which is to put a standing phaser. It's not true but uh, he actually likes to mix things up. I, I, I just do the same exact thing every single time because I just can't come up with new ideas. I just why would I? I just I just why? Speaking of new ideas, let's do what I do with the EQ every single time with every single bass. And that's knock down this frequency to 40, turn this down to 58%, and we're getting the Buku gains today, baby. Let's put on 8. Yeah, that's nice. We're going to be moving that aside at crisp 35. Now, of course, what would be this bump without another bump going the exact opposite direction? Let, let's do it. Come on. Let's go. Negative 12.5. Let's bring this down to, let's make it nice and tight. Yeah, like that. 850 and then I did negative 40 Now let's triple down on those frequencies by putting a high notch 12 on this now I really like the high notch 12 because not only does it give you the high pass 
but it gives you the notch filter going through with this frequency knob. Now, anytime that you have a combination of, uh, you use one of the combination multi, the uh, this frequency knob usually controls the uh, the notch or the peak that it is combined with. So it's always good to kind of keep that in mind. Now, I have this on 36. I noticed that this also kind of really changes the uh, the tonality of the bass depending on where it is. So I would be very careful to uh, make sure you get the parameters right if you want this exact bass. But these are all things that you can mess with. I cranked up that uh, resonance to 60 and doubled down on my notch going right here by putting this on 70% and knocking this down uh, 40, about 41 to 42, I don't know, just one of those numbers. There you go. Don't forget that master tuning to mix up your bass. Now here's the thing guys. I've always wanted to teach you guys how to make things in Serum without using a ton of post-processing. And here's the thing, I don't want to use a ton of post-processing. But I think it's important that we start, you know, learning how to take our bases further with post-processing. I've tried to show that you, there's a lot of things that you can achieve just with Serum alone. But at this point, we need to throw some OTTs on it. We need to throw some distortion on it. We need to, we need to beef this sound up using external plugins. I believe that you can do this easily with uh, free plugins that you find online. For instance, I'm using OTT, which is totally free. Let's throw one on there and turn this down uh, to 20% right there. Now, after the OTT, I put distortion on, which I use kilohertz distortion. This is a great plugin, and you can get everything that they've made for 10 bucks a month, which, in my opinion, is absolutely insane, including phase plan, which I know my video before talked trash on it, but I love it. I I I'm going to tell you guys right now, I love it. It's... It's such a good synth and it opens up your mind to be super experimental and to really push what you, uh, just throwing on a ton of crap on a bass. Like, have you seen some of Alchemy's patches? They're, they, they're just, it just, it's insane. So I just use a subtle amount of drive around three decibels and then I just turn those dynamics all the way up. So after the distortion, I just go ahead and throw another OTT down, bring it down to 20%, and OTT, distortion, OTT, nothing crazy, nothing insane. Now, we'll notice here that our bass is still a little lacking. We can still push it a little bit more, and that's just where a little bit of EQ comes in. We just push up the, the treble a bit, and bring down the low mid, and... Yeah, we got our sound, baby. Mess with the wavetables. Mess with the octave. Mess with this position. Mess with these. Mess with this. Mess with this. Go in here. Throw serum effects on. My mouse wheel's broken. Throw on a reverb filter. Oh, baby. That's gonna wrap up this video, guys. If you learned something cool, feel free to like and subscribe. If you leave a comment, I'm gonna read it. So please be nice, because I have feelings. I have feelings, dog. I, 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 if you're interested in this sound and every other sound that I make and the ones that I do on my live streams and the ones that you don't even see and I just do because I don't want anyone to know that I'm in my room just hiding doing sound design all day, uh, follow me on Patreon. It's $3 and right now I think there's like 80 files on there. Some, I don't know, I just keep adding You know, every time I do something. So it's super cool to check out, you know? You'll get some cool stuff out of it. Other than that, uh, I appreciate you for being here and hope you have a great day.